doesn't God love me? Why do I have to go through this? God loves you so much. That is why you have to go through one battle of these after the other. You know why? Because when you go through these battles, what God is trying to do is, he's trying to take you from grade one to grade five. From grade five to grade six. It's only through the battles that you, you are able to come out victorious. And he will be able to test you. See, when you, when you do push-ups and all those kind of things, when you do that, uh, what happens? When you take weight to build up your muscles, what happens? The weight puts pressure on you. And because of that, your muscles are being built. So don't think that when you go through persecution that God doesn't love you. God really loves you. And God wants to reward you. God wants to take you to, from one level to the other. I remember, I have gone through a lot of persecution, whether from the office or even from believers and all those kind of things. And every time I've gone through a persecution, and whenever I've stood on the word of God and obeyed it, even though my flesh doesn't want to obey it, I've noticed that after the persecution is over and after I win, God always rewards me. He takes us for a trip or he does something very, very new in our lives. Many things, many promotions in our life, spiritual promotion, new things coming into our life, it's all, it has always been after a persecution or after a trial. Every time we've come out victorious. But, you know, there are times your flesh wants to retaliate. You want to say things you don't want to say. And you want to, you know, but then when we hold on, put our flesh down, and when we start walking in love, when we start walking in love and thanking God and praising God and uh, knowing that God loves us, at that time, he brings us victoriously. So it is very important. During the persecution time, that's the time when you feel nobody loves me. Does God really love me? You know why? Because Rom Romans chapter 8, verse 35 says that persecution and all is to separate you from the love of God. So the reason the devil brings uh, persecution is so that you will believe that God doesn't love you. During that time, when you, if you are going through a persecution right now, if you are going through a trial time right now, this is the time when you need to build up your confidence that God loves you. you should be, be, and you should keep saying, God loves me, and I'm going to come out of this victorious. So when Arun uh, was faced with this honors club thing, can you imagine working uh, for one whole year, working hard, and you know, getting all these orders, and overachieving, and bringing a, the greatest profit to Xerox, and everything was ready, and all of a sudden, for some, something silly they bring on you, and they take away that reward. And you know, they take away that reward, and they give it to a charitable or charity. And they tell, give Arun the honor to choose a charity. And Arun said, please go ahead, you go and give it to whoever you want to. And at that time, you know, it was devastating. You, you can imagine being so dishonored. But the Lord says, said that, you know, vengeance belongs to me. You keep quiet. It was not easy to keep quiet. You would want to, you can go and bring all these things uh, according to this. How come this is done? How can this be done? You can send emails. Maybe they could have changed. But we decided to keep quiet. And what happened? As a result of that, many souls were won for the Lord. And out of all our trips, there has not been a trip like this where we had done a lot of ministry. We were on a holiday, but day and night, morning, evening, we didn't have any rest. We didn't even have sleep. And Arun was even telling me, come on, we are on a holiday and we are so tired. But then it was worth it all. We came back so fulfilled, satisfied. If we had gone on that trip with Xerox, we would have been on top of the elephant and seeing the place. We wouldn't have been able to, you know, come fulfilled. We would have just enjoyed and come. But God is a rewarder of those. I mean, he rewarded us and we... Um, not only that he healed Arun completely, like he was feeling bad in the beginning, but then God completely took it away. I don't know how, it was a miracle that he, within a day, it completely went off his heart and he was rejoicing and joyful. And the office people were wondering, I mean, how can he behave like this? But that was God's grace and he, he didn't hurt him or harm him in any way, and God provided us with everything, the finances and everything to go, and God is amazing. So the Lord is, uh, in, uh, 
2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4 to 7. It says that, you know, when wicked people come against you, God will fight against those wicked people if you will not do anything about it. The Lord doesn't want us to do anything about it. If we do something about it, then we already hand, ta taken the problem into our hands. But God is saying, if you will not do anything about it, if you will leave it into my hands, then I will fight it for you. And I have seen it time and again, God doing such things. So uh, when you go through persecution and all that, it's because God loves you and remember that he loves you so much and he wants to reward you. The Bible says um, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, it says that blessed are you. Blessed means, what is the meaning of blessed? Blessed means empowered to prosper. So uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 says, Matthew chapter 5 was, uh, I'm looking at the time. Matthew chapter 5 was 11 says, um, Rejoice and exceedingly, and be exceedingly glad. So he says, empowered to prosper are you when, when, they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. It's not saying be little glad. Be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets. So the Lord is saying when you go through persecution, be exceedingly glad because great is your reward. In the office, they might persecute you because you are a godly person. They might persecute you because you are different. You stand on the word of God. You stand on the principles of God. At that time, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. You say, okay, I am, my promotion is coming near. I know I'm going to go to a new level. I know I'm going to be taken from grade one to grade five. I'm not, I know I'm going to get a double promotion. This is for my double promotion. You need to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. In that case, the devil will not be able to put you down. But if you don't, if you just become sad and walk around sadly, at that time, the devil will be able to come against your mind, attack your mind. But if you would be exceedingly glad and rejoice, the devil will not be able to attack you. And even in Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 14, it says that, you know, bless those who curse you. At that time, it's not easy to bless those who curse you, but you need to obey the word of God. Work at it and start blessing. You should have a desire for your enemies to come to the Lord. And that's when God will start fighting your battle for you. And so here in this uh, trip, we saw amazing things. And the Lord was saying, because I didn't, we didn't have the time even to sit and pray and prepare before each meeting. Because after one meeting was over, the next early morning, another meeting was there. But then in all that, God was so faithful. When I went to that school, I said, Lord, I have only 15 minutes. I don't know what to say. How will I say everything? And he was not even giving me anything. The Lord said, open your mouth and I will fill it. I said, oh my goodness, I need to have so much of faith to stand in front of these uh, about 100 or 150 students, to stand in front of them and just open my 